Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over a few items and this first one is going to be an actual trash to treasure. This uh, little um, end table or cabinet needs some serious help. Uh, most people would just throw this away. But I know that it can be fixed. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is uh, take all that loose veneer off. And on the top, I end up taking all of it off. I just use a scraper and it comes right off. And there was a little bit that I wasn't able to get. But what I wasn't able to get with the scraper, I just use a sander and it sanded right off. So obviously I cleaned this up good also because it was definitely very dirty. And, um, and then I put a coat of polyurethane on the top uh, to make sure that I didn't have any bleed through. Now another thing that I needed to address is this handle. Uh, it's in really good condition, but um, I just didn't like it. So it had an odd cap over the, uh, the screw, so um, I just used a flat screwdriver and that pried right out. Uh, the only problem was uh, it was a flathead screwdriver, obviously, and um, it was there was just no way to get a screwdriver in there. It had so much gunk in it that there was just no way, so uh, I ended up kind of prying uh, the handle off and uh, it actually pried off pretty easily. One of the screws actually broke and the other one I just kind of took a hammer and, and, uh, and hammered it from the back side to get it out. And then, um, like I said, I put that coat of polyurethane on the top. Now I'm using the color Sawmill Gravy and I'm gonna paint the inside of the bottom cabinet and both sides of the door and then the top, the very top of this cabinet. So um, I'll give all of this two coats of the color Sawmill Gravy. And like I said, this two, took two coats to cover. I love redoing small pieces of furniture when they're in such rough shape to begin with because I just love the before and after. And I also love salvaging uh, things that people have just thrown out. That kind of gives me a feeling of accomplishment. And obviously sometimes things are in such bad shape that there's just no way to, uh, to fix them. But this one was uh, very easy to make a really big difference in. And I guess that's why I like doing small furniture because... Uh, it doesn't take as long, and uh, sometimes when I'm working on a, a large piece of furniture, I kind of get bored with it, uh, but I just really like working on these little pieces. So now that I have two coats of the color sawmill gravy on, then the remainder of the cabinet is going to get this color of gray. Now all of these colors that I'm using are Dixie Belle colors. This gray, however, is a mixture of gravel road and the sawmill gravy because I wanted to kind of warm the gravel road up and lighten it a little also. So I've mixed probably half and half of the color gravel road and the color sawmill gravy and that's what the remainder of the cabinet will get. And I was really happy with the warm gray that that, that, that made. So then after the cabinet was painted and dry, then uh, I decided to do a stencil on the top. And I'm using my stencil Kindest Regards, and that's an IOD stencil. And I'm inking it up with some black stays on ink, and uh, that's what I'll do as a finish on the top. Now I also uh, do that same thing on uh, inside the cabinet, just on the bottom. And then I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of character there to the very top front. Now, I know that's a small area, but as you can see, it, it needs some help, I think. So um, 
I used uh, one of my clay molds and I wish I could put that in the description but it was given to me as a gift and I haven't been able to find that. So um, I just make that little uh, trim mold uh, because it is one of the trim molds and glue it right there to the front. And then I also painted it that same color of gray. Now I wanted uh, some white wax to kind of settle into that design in the, um, in the clay mold. So what I did was I took some clear wax and mixed a, just a few drops of my sawmill gravy in with that and then went over that um, and then some of that kind of settled into that design and really made it pop. And then I just went lightly over the rest of it with some of that white wax also. And uh, that sealed everything and just kind of added some dimension to that color. And then that same polyurethane that I treated the top with, I also uh, did the shelf there on the top with it and then the, uh, and then inside the cabinet. But before I clear coated that shelf there on the top, I uh, found this stencil and decided to do that across the front of the shelf. Now this step is a little out of order uh, because I had already done that um, when I did my stenciling there. Uh, but I wanted to put a finish on this front door and this is called Distressed Damask and it's a it's uh, a rice paper from uh, Dixie Bell, and I love this. It's, it has such a pretty finish. I've, I've done it on another piece of furniture before. So this is a large sheet, uh, and I'm just going to cut one to fit, actually tear one to fit this door, because I felt like this needed some character. So um, that was the reason for the gray in this, and so what I do is I just kind of lay it out and then I outline it with some, uh, with an artist brush and some water and uh, let it set for a minute because it's a little bit harder to tear um, rice paper and you get kind of a fibrous tear and I really like that look. But like I said, you have to really let the, uh, have to be really careful to make sure that you get plenty of water on your edge and uh, you can't tear it right away. You've got to let it sit for a minute or so. But once I got that torn out, then I just decoupage that right on the front of the drawer, or the door rather, and, um, and I thought it gave it a really pretty look. And if you haven't decoupaged with rice paper yet, you really should try it because uh, I feel like it's one of the easiest materials to decoupage with. It has such good results, I think. And as you can see here, I forgot to paint uh, the top inside of that cabinet. So I do have to go back and um, paint that in that same gray color. Sometimes I get carried away with the ideas that I have for the piece and I get in a hurry and like I said, I did miss that. And once I get this decoupaged on and let it dry, then I go ahead with another coat of my um, Mod Podge. And I did do some light distressing on this, uh, not very much because I feel like it has plenty of character otherwise but I wanted some light distressing. And I went back and um, put just a regular glass knob on this uh, from Lowe's, I think, and I feel like that was a much better look. And now the next item that, I, or items, that I'm gonna be making over is uh, some urns. And these were just kind of the brass look urns and um, not crazy about that look and I wanted to make these look old and I wanted to make them look uh, concrete so um, I'm gonna have to do a few steps to make that happen and uh, I'm gonna start with this small one and um, 
it's going to get some clay molds added to it. Actually, both are, so I'm just going to make all my clay molds up. And this is that same trim mold that, like I said, I can't really say where this came from. But I'm going to make several of these because uh, I'll be using several on both of these. And, um, and I'll be making a couple of... Um, larger molds to put in the on the front of both of these and I, I will attach that information um, in the description because those I, I can find. So what I'll be using to attach these is type bond and I have the best luck with type bond when I put a, a, a solid layer but uh, not too thick of uh, the type bond on my project and then let that get a little bit tacky before I attach my mold because uh, that is just that just keeps it from sliding and it doesn't take very long maybe about five minutes if that um, but that's just the the best results I've gotten is is to do it that way and when there's a lot of detail in your stencil and you have a hard time getting it to pull out like I did that one, sometimes it helps to put it in the freezer for just maybe five minutes, not too long again, because it'll break on you. So uh, that just is the best results I've had. Now you can't always glue directly onto the project like this because you don't want that glue all around your project. So it's better to glue directly to your uh, to your mold but in this case I'm going to be adding lots of texture to this now what I didn't mention that with both of these I spray painted them with um, with some brown spray paint and there's a couple reasons for that one is if I get any any of my paint remove to remove when I do my waxing uh, it'll have a good distress color underneath but also um, putting some sort of um, either a spray paint of some kind, uh, even if it's just clear, or uh, some slick stick, uh, then your paint is more likely to stick. So there was actually a couple purposes for that. But as you can see here, I'm gluing all my molds on and I'm just adding that trim mold around the top and then the larger mold in the, in the front. And like I said, I'll, I'll attach the larger mold in the description. But I did feel like that narrow uh, or that thin top is a dead giveaway that this is newer. So uh, like I said, I wanted to make this around the top a lot thicker so it looks more like concrete. And obviously it needed that detail also. So once I get that glued on and let it dry, then uh, then I just uh, painted this with the color Gravel Road. And I just wanted a gray base, uh, and you don't have to do the Gravel Road here, uh, but I wanted a gray base because uh, the brown base obviously is, if I have any of the paint come off, I have that distress color. Uh, but this gray is because I want this to look like concrete so um, I'm going to do a few steps to make that happen, uh, but I also want it to look like a painted concrete that is worn off. So I need this gray underneath, so that's the reason for that. So I just give this two coats of, of this gray, and like I said, I think this is gravel road, but you could use any medium gray would work just fine. And like I said, I don't mind all that texture left from the, the glue because uh, this is, I want to have texture. And I did add texture in this paint, by the way. Um, I mixed it with baking soda and I think I did almost half and half baking soda to, um, to paint. And now I am using uh, a white wax here. Uh, because I want to add the white wax to make this look like concrete because just the gray doesn't look like concrete. Uh, that's where the, the white wax uh, comes in handy. It really makes that, that work. Uh, but um, a lot of people would say not to do what I'm doing with these. 
uh, because painting over white wax is very tri tricky, especially if you don't let it um, cure first. But I want this paint, this one, this, both of these actually happen to be for myself. And I want this paint to look like it's, um, that, that it's kind of chipped off. And I know I could use milk paint for that, but that's not even the look that I want either. I, I want some thickness, uh, like it's just been painted over and over and, and it's chipping. I want to see a lot of the concrete, but also a lot still of the paint. So I'm just having to kind of work with this because um, it's just, I'm just kind of watching it as I go and seeing what looks right. I know in my head what I want it to look like, but, um, but I'll admit that I don't have any idea how to make that happen. So this is definitely something that I'm just playing with and it just happened to work out the way I wanted it. Um, but like I said, a lot of people would say, don't paint over this wax and, um, and they're right. If you want a good coverage and you want it to stick well, then you shouldn't. Uh, but uh, it worked really well for what I was doing. And even the next day, it was just, um, it was staying on really well. And it felt like I had a good hard finish on this. So um, it, it definitely did work for me. But if you don't want this old look, then uh, definitely don't do what I'm doing. So now as soon as I finished with the white wax, uh, then I'm just going to take the color Sawmill Gravy and just kind of lightly brush a coat on there. And when I say a coat, not even a full coat. I just want it somewhat covered. And I want it kind of thick in places, but um, then sparse in others. And I want my, my um, paint strokes to go in the same direction. And like I said, this was all an experiment, um, and it just happened to work. Uh, but I'm just kind of painting a, um, a very scattered coat, if that makes sense to you, uh, until I get the whole thing somewhat covered. And like I said, I'm just kind of taking these strokes in the same direction. And I'm, this is not a dry brush. It's kind of a, you just kind of drag it on and don't really put a lot of pressure on it. And then once I got it covered, then I just took my my rag and just kind of maybe blotted it away. Um, I don't know what else to say that I did. I just kind of blotted. Uh, in places I might have rubbed a little, but for the most part, I just kind of blotted this away. And here it's starting to take on the look that I want, but still I feel like it needs more work. Uh, so as you can see, some of this is, is, has kind of a weird texture to it because of the wax. But again, that's what I want. And if I rub too much away, like I did there, I just add a little bit back. And then I took some of a product called Dixie Dirt and I put a little bit on a fan brush, just a little bit. And now I'm just kind of uh, dropping a little of it off and I just kind of flick it when it doesn't come off well. And as you can see there, I got too much on it, but you can always touch that up. But I just kind of want to build some layers of... Um, of natural distress and you know in these old pots you got some dirt down in those crevices and uh, so I just kind of want a lot of dimension in my color and then here I am just kind of touching up where I got too much of that Dixie dirt I would say you could even use instant coffee for for that just put, dip your paint in some dry instant coffee and and um, and let that just kind of drop on there that would work also and then uh, once I got enough of that on there then um, I just take some uh, brown glaze 
uh, and just start adding some staining in the color and that's what I'm doing here is just uh, dipping a little bit of that in there and adding like some dirt has just kind of gathered up in in some of the crevices and that really made a difference I know this is a lot of steps and uh, you know I'm sure there is a more simple method and you wouldn't have to go all through this this is me just uh, trying to figure it out as I go uh, but uh, I don't mind the extra steps especially when I'm doing an item to keep uh, because uh, this all this aging doesn't happen quickly it, it happens over a long period of time so it's not surprising that it takes a little bit to create that look so once I get enough of the dirty look on there that I like uh, then that's all that I did to this one because I don't have to clear coat it at this point because it's got all these layers of uh, you've got the glaze and the and the wax and um, and like I said I don't even mind staining on this one so um, I think it's gonna work just the way it is and like I said I was really happy with the look that I got on this it was um, it really looked uh, authentic once it was finished so now uh, I'm gonna do the one that's a little bit larger and um, again although it's larger it still needs uh, some thickness so I'm gonna do the same thing uh, by adding these molds to this one I'll add that long larger one in the front there and it was quite a bit larger than the the first one that I did and then I'll add the trim molds around the top and the bottom and again I can't attach the trim mold because um, I can't seem to find it but there are many trim molds out there and any of those will work again I'm putting my my uh, tight bond straight onto my project first because I don't mind the texture and like I said that mold is is very fragile so um, I'm just making sure I have plenty of glue uh, where my mold will be and now I'm adding some glue around the top and then I'll, I'll add my mold around the top and the bottom of this too uh, because this one it's just very obvious at the top and the bottom that that is metal and it's just that thickness you just can't you can't fake that so you've got to add something for that and I think the more you can add uh, the better because it just makes this look so much chunkier and um, so much more like an old concrete pot would look and now again once I get all these molds in place uh, then I'm going to give this um, two coats of that same gravel road and like I said any gray will work just a medium gray is what you want and again I've added texture to this paint um, and you could use Dixie Bell has a product called sea spray and it is a wonderful texture additive uh, but um, and it's not very expensive but um, don't always have that on hand and most people have baking soda on on hand so that's what I'm using here and the more texture you can add uh, to this uh, because you want that concrete look the more it's going to look like concrete so and once you do a wax on it it has a lot more areas to settle down into so um, don't be afraid to go heavy on the texture And once I get uh, two coats on here and let it dry, then uh, it's ready for the next step. And what I do uh, on the top of these is I just find that natural lip. And as you can see there, it, it, this one has one. So uh, then you don't have to worry about painting the inside just in case you decide to put a plant in it. Now, once this one dried and I did my white wax on it, then I'm brushing, I brushed some school glue over it, some um, Elmer school glue. So um, that on top of that wax 
uh, and then painting over that I really got some uh, almost kind of a gloppy mess at, which is exactly what I wanted um, I didn't even let my glue dry completely to the touch uh, so that it would really start to pull up so like I said I did the the gray paint and then I did my white wax wipe that off well and then I went over it with a one coat of just regular school glue and then let that dry almost to the touch and then I went over it with kind of a fuller coat of paint than I did with the last one because I knew a lot of this was going to pull away uh, and so I didn't worry about leaving as much of it unpainted. So now I'm just adding that brown glaze in to make it look dirty and aged and uh, this one really worked out well. Now what happens on here is some of your uh, it doesn't crackle like like the school glue normally would because we have that wax underneath so what happens is some of it kind of pulls away and kind of rolls up and like i said it seems like a mess but once you rub over it with your rag uh, it just it takes all that excess uh, away and it leaves some extra texture like your paint is trying to peel up and that's what happens with these old urns. And um, so a combination of all of it just really works. And like I said, I know this is a lot of steps. Uh, and for most of you, it probably won't be worth it. Uh, but for me, it is. I, this is definitely my style. So I know that um, it's just going to take some time to get the look that, that I want. So now... Something like this, maybe you wouldn't want to sell it because um, I don't know if you could compensate for your time, if someone would appreciate that much because, you know, it's obvious that it's not old and you don't want to say it's old if it isn't. So you're just not going to get your, um, you're just not going to get your effort, the money for your effort, I don't feel like. Uh, but to me... I get the enjoyment of it and it's worth it and honestly I kind of enjoy this process of just uh, seeing what each step does and if something kind of backs you up uh, then you can always you can always paint something over it so don't get afraid to to paint and experiment especially on items that do belong to you uh, because in experimenting you'll learn more than you would even watching others now I may decide to finish the inside of these um, I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put either of my plants in them uh, or if I'm just going to have them sitting for decor and I'm kind of leaning toward just letting them sit for decor and maybe putting something in it but maybe the inside might show uh, so I'm, I'm very seriously considering doing the inside. I just want to make certain first that I don't want to use them for my plants. I always pick up these urns because I just really, really like the look of them. Um, and even if I'm not using them at home, uh, then I just like the look of them for the store. And here I'm adding some of that Dixie dirt again. Just like with most of what we do, layering, the more layering you can add, the better look you're going to get. And again, I was very happy with uh, how this one turned out. And then for the last item, um, I'm going to do a pedestal. And I know you guys see these all the time, but this is just one that I thrifted and I thought I might use it as a riser. Uh, and so, as you can see, it's got that very fake finish on it. So, I'm just going to do uh, two coats of the color Gravel Road with this one. And, uh, and then once that dries well, then I'm just going to add that white wax and keep this one like a new cement look. Um, although, at some point, I may go back and age this one as well, even, since I'm, even though I'm just going to use it in the shop. 
uh, I feel like it'll look much better aged. So right now I'm just doing it as a cement finish, but like I said, I may I may add that later. And again, once that dries well, then I just add my white wax. And um, like I said, I, I I probably will go back and age this because once I did the other two, um, and then I did this one. I just couldn't get happy with this one at all. It just seemed so plain to me. But again, not everyone likes the age look. It's I have to remind myself of that so much that um, not everybody likes old things. And um, I like neutral colors. Not everybody does. I hear that in my comments a lot of times when people want color. Um, but I've always, with the shop, I'll do some things that um so that i have something for everyone but uh, i told my husband early on that if i go in all these different directions so that i have something for everyone then then the store doesn't have any special look to it so um i figure even though uh, not everybody has my taste if i like it then somebody else is going to like it too and um, so I do, I do stick with neutral a lot, and I do age things a lot uh, because I just like it so much. And like I said, that's all I'm going to do to this one, and then, uh, and then it'll all be finished. I wanted to give a shout out to one of my viewers. Uh, her name is Brienne. Uh, she goes by Gina, and she came by the shop with her husband and son and daughter-in-law and it was such a blessing to get to meet her and we had a really nice visit and today was her birthday so it was exciting to get to be a part of that i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope to see you in the next thank you so much for watching have a great evening and god bless you and your family